the cornerstone. You reinforce it, you work together to strengthen the foundation. Thank you. Okay, maybe leave here educated, maybe leave here knowledgeable of the pain that some of us have endured so that when we leave this place, here's what we don't expect. I'm those young men, you will never be anybody's boy. You will never be anybody's house. We can be upset with everybody. We can start blaming the white people. We can start saying we can leave them on faith the truth. They are here. They are here. They were the first ones here. They have their signs. They brought their kids out. They came out to stand with us, to rally with us. And you know what happens? Even when they're still rallying, we're off to a new thing because it's, it's, it's graduation season. Somebody about to turn up. <laughs> we got to be at that spot. For literally nothing. And like the fact that the, like our world is like this is not okay. And they're going to listen to us this time because there's no way. There was a march in 1963, a peaceful march. And they're, they weren't listening to us then and it's 2020 now. They're not going to listen to us now unless we do something. Please, like, continue to pop out, continue to, like, come to these events. Like, I was in Harlem yesterday. I was marching. We're in a pandemic, and we're still marching. We're still going to fight for what's ours. We're still going to fight for our freedom because we've never had it. we never had it, and we're going to have it this time. We're going to. Because they have to listen to us. They're going to listen to us because our youth are scared. We're scared. There's no way I should be scared to walk outside and see a cop and just expect him to do something to me, say something to me. There's no way. But that's all I really wanted to say. Thank, Thank you. you. Continue doing this. Our community needs us. Thank you. We love you. That's it. Thank you. They can reach in the center console and get it. Not my son. He leaves it on the passenger seat so he don't get his head blown off for reach. His hands stay on the wheel. He's told that every day, 33 years old. We go to this continuously. <laughs> I said, she, uh, she worries about a 15-year-old. I worry about my 33-year-old. Every day he leaves to pray that he comes back because it's not guaranteed. When you look around, and I'm saying it mostly to the white people, it's taught. you got to change it inside your own community, our community, the Riverhead community. Maybe somebody on the outside will listen. But it hurts every day to have to tell you, your 33-year-old son, be careful, do the right thing. Eric, thank you very much for this. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I've had this conversation. So I'm talking to our white friends that are here. If you have never have had to have the conversation with your son between the ages of 10 and 12 about how to act when the cops come around or if you're in the car with a friend and the cops come around, you may have empathy for our pain, but you will never know the pain to have that conversation. My son goes out with his friends, they ride bikes. A lot of kids like to game, my kid likes to be outside. Rides their bikes, they go, you know, buy sodas, chips, whatever. I worry when he leaves, he has a backpack on, he's black, and if he goes into the store to purchase something, are they watching him? Are they bothering him? You know, when the kids ride in groups, in bikes, People have a lot of problems with that. I live in Mastic, but I grew up here in Riverhead, and my heart is still in Riverhead. That I have learned and that we've taught people is that not to sit by silently, not to be a silent bystander, because you're just as culpable when you sit by and be a silent bystander. If we learn nothing from this video, watching this police officer with his knee down on George's neck for almost nine minutes when three other officers sat there, silently as innocent bystanders and let this happen, that is wrong. And as a white person in America, we cannot stand by anymore silently and let this go on. We heard a lot of great speakers today. And I'd really like to thank this man here, Eric, for getting us all together. speakers too and they said a lot of great things we need to make this not like the million a man march where they just came together had a good party and then left and never went back to their community and do anything let's start today let's start today doing something we're all here as human beings 
I have been seeing all of the marches, all of the protests, all of the things that people saying are saying on Facebook and social media, and they want change. We all want change. But the real question is, what are we doing? What actions are we taking? But one thing that we should all do is start looking at some of the younger people that are in this circle right now. That's right. No matter what color they are, no matter where they come from, no matter what background, we all have the opportunity right now to start teaching them at a younger age that we are all together, we are all equal, we are all humans fighting the same battle. We all want to be loved, we all want to have peace, we all want to be together. So it starts here and it starts now. You look at a lot of the older people who are here and they've already dealt with this. Why are we still protesting this? Why is my mother still coming out here to protest the same thing that her mother was protesting? Why are we still doing this? Let's all ask ourselves these questions and let's look at our neighbors and everyone else in our community and start challenging each other. If you see someone on Facebook and you don't agree with what they say, challenge them. If they know who you are in your heart and they will argue their side up against your side, show them what it means to you and what it means to them. Listen to them and have them listen to you. We need to start the conversation for everyone. It's not just about Black Lives Matter and I'm not trying to make it every life matters, but we are all in this together. It's about everyone versus racism, period. That's it. We have to do this together. Like the sign said, enough is enough. You know, everyone here, everyone here is hurting. That's why we're all here. Everyone here feels something about the situation that's going on. Talk about it. Start it in your community. You know, it starts here in Riverhead. It spreads to the rest of the North Fork. We go west. Then we start moving towards the city. We be Everybody, you know that you have differences, but we're putting it aside. We're standing together. We're standing in solidarity together. And you know, we're gonna handle this. You know, together. We're gonna make peace happen. Please. 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 That's the big deal. Vote local. Register to vote. Go. Another moment of silence. Powerful. 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 Let him think about it. Let him think about it. Let him see this. Nothing Our four people built this country. From each other. Our Not people built country. this. We built that White House down there in Washington. Right. Black people. That's right. Black Black people! Black people! Black people! Black people! Know your history! Know your history! Black people built that! Black people built it! But we're equal! I don't have rights! A dog got more rights than a black person! And it's a shame! And it's a shame! Right here in Riverhead! How much speak it? Because I'm tired of it! I'm tired of it, and I'm not scared. I want the world to know, I am not scared. My name is Frederick Miles. Power to the people, power to the people. No 
justice, no peace. No justice, no peace.
want to speak? You got something you want to? Say something. This way he's building a bond. Ain't nobody. Come on. 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 Okay, guys, we're with you every day. We're here. I've been here 38 years. I'm protecting you every day. These guys are protecting you every day. We're doing our job. If there's a problem with us, then you come to me and we talk about it. What happened? We're with you, but you know, guys, we have a job to do too, right? So we're here to protect you. We do things the right way. We do things the right way. Judging us by. This is what we have for you. I don't know. How much time before you need to do this? This is a peaceful protest. Done by uh, Riverhead Senior because she felt that there was a need to stand up. And that's what we're going to do. Everybody over here has their individual issues with the police department. So what you need to do is to take that to town hall, make the people we put in office have town hall meetings and speak your mind there. This is not the format for it. This is not the format for it. It was for us to come out, show solidarity that we are against the injustices that is happening across the country for our black people. And that's it. Everybody has, we, my son was um, brutalized by police. I'm not bringing that in Riverhead, in the town of Southampton. He was, he was, uh, biased against, prejudiced against because of his color. He was in a car with four white people, four white males, and they singled him out. But I knew this wouldn't be the platform to bring it up. We brought it up in court, and that's where we got our justice at. So if you think that you can't get your justice, go to your town leaders, the people we put in office. That's how you make moves. You got to be a boss. You make boss moves. And that's what I I made boss moves and got my son cleared. Here you go, Amara. That's what you do. We're not doing that here.